I know everyone's upset right now about the PS5 Pro. Listen, there's definitely some sticker shock behind that $700 price tag. I'm sure you're upset because it does not come with a disk drive. You gotta pay an extra 80 bucks for that. And I totally get it. You're probably not gonna like what I have to say in this video because unfortunately, video games are a business. Unfortunately, it's not always what's best interest of the gamers that's in mind in these companies. I think that goes without saying. There are some things that I think gamers have misconceptions about that I'm gonna try and clear up a little bit today. So let's start with the facts of the situation. This is a mid-console release, meaning the console exists. They've already gotten you into the ecosystem more likely than not. This is the upgrade over the prior version. The prior version is staying intact. We have not replaced it. Now that means a few different things. The first is we're several years off from the PlayStation 6. It's not coming in the next few years at least. Secondly, it also means that they're not looking to lose money on this console. When a console first releases for Microsoft or PlayStation, they have lost money pretty much every single time they've released them for a few different reasons. The first is they haven't had the time to perfect the technology and bring it down to a scale where it's actually more profitable to them. So their overall costs are higher rather than when they release the updated slim version, that kind of thing, the costs tend to come down they tend to start making money on the hardware. Nintendo's a little bit of a different story, but we all know why that is, because Nintendo is not playing in the same game in terms of raw power and graphics and those types of things. That's just not what Nintendo does. But for Microsoft and for Sony, they lose money on launches. But what they don't typically do is lose money on the mid-console refreshes. So that is the new slim version, that is the updated special versions, because they already have that technology. They've done a few tweaks to bring down the costs and they're looking to try and profit on the hardware from people who haven't gotten into it yet. That even goes for the pro models. So when they release these things, they're looking to make a profit on it. There's not really a reason for them to release it at a negative because again, they're typically catering to people who are already in the ecosystem or they have to provide a value add on top of the old system. The next thing you need to think about is that competition is the number one factor in deciding cost, right? It's the supply and the demand. Now, the problem is that unfortunately, Microsoft is just not holding up their end of the bargain in this console generation. That doesn't mean they're bad. That doesn't mean Xbox is bad. That just means that they're not winning this console generation. I think they've actually gone on record and admitted it themselves. That means that Sony is kind of in their own playing field. Now, Nintendo, you could argue, has won the whole thing, but again, in terms of the playground that Microsoft and Sony are playing in, Sony is clearly winning in the higher-end performance console game. Microsoft, they aren't even releasing a pro version. They're releasing a special edition that's got a larger hard drive. It's not the same thing as releasing a pro version. I'm sure they will. I think in that leak plan, they did have one, and it's still a year or two off, whatever. There's no real competition between the two of them at the moment. Sony can kind of do what they want and they don't have to worry about Microsoft stealing their player base. We need to talk about the realities of PC gaming because if Xbox isn't the competition, the next competition is PC. And I see a whole lot of people online saying, oh, I could build a PC cheaper than that and I'd be able to do all the PC things and run the games at a similar level. Well, Digital Foundry debunked that. Range, and at some point, I have to imagine people are saying, maybe I should just go to PC at this point because this is this is quite expensive. Yeah. What, mm -hmm. what do you imagine that would cost? Probably a fair bit more. I mean, anyone who knows anything really about performance and where the situation is in terms of graphics cards knows that you would typically need something around a 4070 in today's modern graphics cards to produce similar results to what we expect the PlayStation 5 Pro to do. Now. What does a 4070 cost? Well, looking on Amazon as I'm recording this footage, the cheapest one I see is about $530, all right? Keep in mind, a graphics card doesn't come with a disk drive, a graphics card doesn't come with RAM, a graphics card doesn't come with an SSD, doesn't come with a case, doesn't come with a power supply, doesn't come with a monitor, doesn't come with a controller, doesn't come with a keyboard, doesn't come with a mouse, doesn't come with any of these things. You still need to build the rest of the PC and you're at $530. So this thing is $700, let's ignore the disk drive for a second. $700 to $530, that's $170 to build the rest of your PC. Can you do that? No, obviously not. Let's be real about it. Now, can you expand a PC more than a PlayStation? Absolutely. Are there many people who are gonna be happier playing on PC than on PlayStation? Absolutely. These are 
not in question. We're talking about the general consumer and what the value of a console is. It is solely focused on gaming. It's not productivity, it's not anything else that you'd be trying to do with a PC, it's focused on gaming. And to get that gaming performance, you would have to pay at least two to three times the cost that you're going to pay for a PlayStation 5 Pro. That's just the nature of the beast, it's where we're at. The other side of PC gaming that we have to make sure we don't ignore is that these PC ports are terrible on release. There are so many broken games. The most popular games like Hogwarts Legacy was a mess on PC. Even Elden Ring has had its problems on PC and performed far better on PlayStation than it did on your PC. Even higher end PCs had issues with stuttering and those types of things. Now on the highest end PC, does it look better and run better? Maybe, but now you're talking about a PC that runs two, three, four thousand dollars. An RTX 4090, which is the high-end GPU right now, runs like, I don't know, fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars on its own. That means you could buy two PlayStation 5 Pros and the disk drive for the cost of an RTX 4090. So you have to keep these things in mind. Now, do I wish it came at a lower price point? Absolutely. Do I wish they had a model that came with the physical drive installed? Absolutely I do. I mean, just take a look behind me. I am into physical games. I am still waiting to play Black Myth Wukong because they released a physical that doesn't have a physical game in it. So I'm just gonna wait until there's a disc with the game on it. Castlevania Dominus just came out. I ordered that from Limited Run on a physical. Now, usually I don't order from Limited Run, but I wanted that on a physical cartridge. So that's the next thing that we need to talk about, the disc drive. I don't want to wish this into the ether, but either this generation or the next are probably going to be the last that take physical media, at least from Microsoft and Sony. This is a testing of the waters, if you will, that they're releasing this as a base system with a larger hard drive and no disk drive. Now, this is also a cost cutting measure because previously they would have two different chassis, okay? They'd be mostly the same, but to create two versions, one that has the disk drive and one that doesn't, means you've got two different forms that you have to produce. It also means that if one sells really well and the other one doesn't, well, now you're stuck with the one that didn't sell. So what did they do? They made a base model that doesn't have a drive that you can add the drive onto. Now, is that infuriating for someone like me? Yes, absolutely. Does it make sense from a business perspective? Yes, absolutely. Because they would say, this cuts our costs because now we're only making one model and then you can decide whether or not you're picking up those disk drives. And that's the only thing that varies on how much we produce. Don't get me wrong, this sucks. I hate this. I hate the fact that I have to buy a separate disk drive if I want PlayStation Pro with the ability to play all these games that are behind me. But ultimately, in terms of these console producers, their goal is to move to digital. They don't want to sell all these discs and all these cases and all these covers and all these everything. Why do you think there are no manuals anymore? Why do you think there's no exterior box anymore? Why do you think they're getting away from all this physical media? Because it's more cost effective. They give you almost nothing in return and charge the same price. Now, can you get it cheaper on a sale? Yeah, sure, but those folks that want to play day one when a brand new game comes out, it doesn't matter how you buy it. Digital media on PC or on console versus physical media, it's the same cost, except to the people who are producing it, who are shipping it, who are sending it to retailers. Physical media is a money loser long term for consoles. I hate it as much as anyone else. I want physical to continue. I want disk drives to continue. I want cartridges to continue. Right now, it looks like Nintendo is the only one that's content to continue to release media on a physical cartridge, and we'll see if that changes in the future. But that's where they would love it to go because that's where they're gonna save money over the long run. By the way, the cheapest RTX 4090 I see while I'm recording this video is about $1,700. So there you go. Next, let's talk about, is PlayStation 5 Pro necessary? Well, kind of. If you've been playing the latest and greatest games on PlayStation 5, you know that there is another level for it to go to. You know that already games are stressing this generation of systems. In fact, they've been doing it since probably year three or so that they were out because the first year or two, they really did optimize for PlayStation 5. There weren't a ton of issues in terms of performance, but their point about 75% of people using performance mode is 100% accurate. I mean, 
the vast majority of people are going to choose performance over the graphic fidelity. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Why? Because if you go to a lower frame rate, it increases latency. This is a fact. This is why high refresh monitors with high frame rate PC rigs are used in all these different esports because it decreases latency. You're trying to get to zero. The fact that they have all these games that are designed to do so much more than what gamers are actually using it for because the PlayStation 5 cannot run at 60 frames per second on many of them with everything turned on, yeah, the Pro is kind of needed. Unfortunately, these developers are creating games that are pushing the envelope of the system, not all of them, but the ones that are, are turning everything to the max, then they're finding out, ah crap, well we can't do all this, it's still running 60 frames per second, so we need a quality mode at 30 frames per second, and a performance mode at 60. Some of them are doing a balanced mode that's running around like 40. Some are doing uncapped frame rates, which generally don't work with most televisions. So we're already there. Ray tracing crushes the PlayStation 5. It means you basically can't run ray tracing and be at 60 frames per second on a base PlayStation 5. You just, you can't do it. So PlayStation 5 Pro, in theory, if it's as powerful as they say, will allow gamers to actually see all the graphic fidelity that's being put into these games and run it at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second. It'll be interesting to see how they do that with certain games without sacrificing the fidelity. I think that's a really good selling point and it's about all you can offer on a mid console refresh, which is what PlayStation 5 Pro is. So is $700 too much for a PlayStation 5 Pro? Yes, yes it is, but the people who are going to buy it are the people who want the absolute most in performance. And it seems inarguable that PlayStation 5 is going to be the best way to experience almost any console game that's released. Now, if something's released directly to PC and is optimized for it, fantastic, PC will be the best way to play it. But so many of these AAA games are being released with consoles in mind. PlayStation 5 Pro with no challenge from Microsoft has absolutely nothing preventing them from charging $700 and then an additional $80 on a disk drive. By this point in the video, you may be asking, well, what the hell was that box you were holding up in the beginning? Well, let's open it up and take a look. This right here will tell you what's going on with PlayStation 5 Pro. Is it going to sell out? Yeah, probably, because this damn thing sold out like everywhere. I think there might be GameStop Pro members might still be able to order it. I ordered it from Walmart. Why did I order it? Because I'm gonna have to get this thing. It's gonna be the best way to play these games on a physical media. So if I don't get it now, when am I gonna get it? There's no guarantee that PlayStation 6 is backwards compatible. There's no guarantee that PlayStation 6 has a disc drive. So yeah, I bit the bullet. I ordered one of these. The console's coming out on my birthday. It's excuse enough for me to go ahead and pick it up, but. Again, does everyone have to get one? No, absolutely not. Is Sony insane for charging $700? A little bit, but you have to understand it from a business perspective. This is why Sony is doing it. It makes a lot of sense on their end. They're gonna get some backlash. They're gonna sell out on their disc drives. They're going to sell out on their PlayStation 5 Pros and life is gonna go on for them and they will have made some money back from their initial investment in creating the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 is totally fine as a console. It's totally capable. They're going to have to release every single game from here to the end of the console with the PlayStation 5 in mind. But for those who are looking at the next level, for those who are thinking about the future, which could be a discless or mediasless future, PlayStation 5 Pro is gonna be your only option. So unfortunately, this is the monopoly of this generation of video gaming. It is what it is. Hope this video wasn't too much of a bummer, but I gotta tell you like it is, guys. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of the PlayStation 5 Pro? Does what I'm saying make sense to you? I know it's not gonna be a positive thing. I don't like it myself. I've said it many times, but it's just the facts of where we're at today. So that's gonna do it for today. So as always, this is Pirates for Pirates Gaming saying thank you for watching. And until next time, I will see you there. All right, rant over.